Hello, my name is Erin. I'm a crochet pattern designer behind Juniper and Oaks. I like to take interesting stitches like these, teach you how to do them, and then help you create items around your home. Today, we're going to be learning the Jasmine stitch, which I've also heard as the Daisy Puff stitch. Uh, so this Jasmine stitch, you get these beautiful six-petaled flowers, basically, um, using these puff stitches. Now this, some people think is one of the hardest crochet patterns. It's not necessarily too hard. It's just a little bit complicated because you'll have so many loops on your hook. But once you figure it out, you just do the same thing over and over and over again. And it's actually pretty simple. The hardest part is just figuring it out and making your hands do the things that it needs to do. So I'm really excited to show you this. Before we get started, please give this video a thumbs up to help more people find it. Leave a comment down below with one of your favorite crochet stitches right now. And after this video, we'll see if we've made this one your favorite. So go ahead and tell me right now which, which crochet stitch is your favorite. I'd love to know. And if you're not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would love for you to be part of my crochet community on here. I come out with all sorts of yarn related content, such as tutorials like this, chit chats with other crochet designers, and other yarny related videos. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel and then hit the little bell so you're notified anytime I come out with any other yarn related content. Okay, let's get started to learn how to do this Jasmine stitch. To do this tutorial, I'm going to be using a size G hook, a four millimeter hook. This is a hook I um, got from a Frost Crochet. It's one of their wooden streamlines. And then I'm going to be using worsted weight yarn. Now you can practice this stitch and learn how to do it using any weight yarn and any hook, but I do suggest using a smaller millimeter hook with the worsted weight yarn. Um, reason for doing so, you know, having the hook too big for the yarn, these holes in the middle end up getting a little bit too loose and too big. So I was making up this panel for the des desert jasmine pillow. Um, I I had to go down a hook size. I was going to use H and then realized I needed to go with a G um, just because it made my holes a lot smaller. So work up your swatch and then decide if you need to go bigger or smaller or what. For this tutorial, we're just going to be making basically a gauge swatch with a smaller number of jasmine stitches. Um, before you take on any bigger project like that, you want to know your tension, your gauge. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do, instead of starting out with a foundation chain, we're going to do a puff foundation, a puff stitch foundation. So the first thing we're going to learn is how to create the puff stitches. And then we're going to be using those stitches as the basis for the jasmine stitch in between. So to get our foundation row, start by making a slip knot. And then insert your hook and pull that. You're going to be doing one chain. So do one chain and then kind of wiggle your yarn so that it's a little bit loose and standing up. You want it the size of how big your puff is going to be. So if you need to make it bigger, you wiggle. What I found, because I do crochet a little bit tighter, like going up about like that is where you need it to be. Now that we've got our yarn a little bit loose from the chain. We're going to now put seven loops on our hook and how we do that is by um, is to make our puff stitch and I'll show you how we do that. You're going to yarn over and insert your hook through that first hole from your slip knot, that first chain, or we'll call it maybe the second chain from your hook. We're going to then grab our yarn and pull up a loop and then kind of make it loose again. Pull it away from the stitch, and bring it up kind of high. So right now we have three loops on our hook. So we're gonna do that again two more times. So yarn over, insert your hook through that same chain space. And we're gonna grab our yarn and pull up a loop and pull a little bit loose. Okay, so now we have one, two, three, four, five loops around our hook. We're gonna yarn over again insert through that same space, 
grab our yarn and pull up the loop and pull it a little bit away from the stitch. You may find you need to pull it up more than I do, just whatever works for you. And now we have our seven loops on our hook. Now we're going to yarn over and pull through all of those loops. But before I pull through, I'm going to grab this yarn right here at the base. Grab that yarn and then we're going to pull through all seven of those loops. You're going to find that you might have to wiggle your way through. It might catch a little bit. Okay. And then you grab, you had a hold of that yarn here at the base. You're going to insert your hook. And then I'm going to be doing a slip stitch. Now, traditionally, the jasmine stitches taught were right here. You're going to do a single crochet. But uh, through research and trial and error, I found out that the holes in the middle here are tighter if you just use a slip stitch than a single crochet. So you can use either. You can make a single crochet or a slip stitch, but I'm going to show you the slip stitch way because I really do prefer it that way. So you're going to yarn over and go through both of these loops for your slip stitch and then chain one. And that is how we start our foundation puff stitch. Now to do the second one, we're going to pull your yarn a little bit away, yarn over, and we're going to basically be doing the same thing, thing, but now our space is right here. Kind of right on top of or in that slip stitch space is where we're going to be working in. Okay, so we pulled our yarn away, we've yarned over, and we're going into that space and we're going to grab our yarn and pull up a loop, kind of extend our stitch. And that was one. We're going to do that two more times for a total of three times, right? Yarn over, insert your hook through that space, yarn over, pull up a loop, extend your stitch, yarn over, insert through that same space. For the last third time, yarn over, pull up a loop, oops, okay, extend your stitch. Okay, now we're going to yarn over and pull through all seven of those loops. Count them, we got seven. But before we pull over, so we yarn over and then grab this yarn, the base of those puff stitches, and pull through all seven of those. You'll find out if you have your yarn, your stitch standard far enough that that becomes easier. Okay, and now you see here that is where the yarn is. <laughs> Um, if you've pulled too tight, you can kind of pull that back a little bit. Um, just make sure you go through that one strand there. Yarn over and then do a slip stitch. And then you chain one. Okay, so now we have two puff stitches. For this tutorial, I'm going to be doing a total of 10 puff stitches, just so um, I can create a good gauge swatch. Yarn over, extend your stitch a little bit, yarn over, then we're going on top of this foundation puff stitch. So insert your hook through that hole, yarn over, pull up a loop, extend it a little bit. We're doing that a total of three times. So here's number two. Number three. So you have seven loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over, hold on to that yarn at the base, and pull through all seven. Ooh, that one was really good. I should get a star for that one on how easy that was to come through. <laughs> Insert your hook through that space or that yarn that you just took hold of at the base. Yarn over and do a slip stitch. Okay, and then chain one. Extend your stitch. I'll show you again. Yarn over. Insert your hook through that space. Pull up a loop. Yarn over. Insert your hook through the space. Yarn over. Pull up a loop. 
and over insert with space and pull up a loop. Okay, so notice each time I'm kind of wiggling the yarn, wiggling my hook so that the yarn gets extended here. Okay, I'm going to yarn over, grab the yarn at the base here. Then you notice how I really do, I turn my hook so it's kind of upside down and then kind of wiggle it through. Sometimes you find that your hook gets caught on the yarn on here and doing a lot of wiggling or going up is what I found is the best way to make sure you don't get caught. Sometimes you do get caught and you can um, just undo your stitch and try again or figure out ways that work best for you to get that through all seven of those loops. During this foundation um, puff row, I just recommend you keep practicing that till you get the hang of it because the rest of the jasmine stitch is you're working three puff stitch at the same time. In here, you're going to have like 19 loops on your hook. So just keep that in mind so that um, as you're practicing here, make sure that you're able to get through all seven of those before we move on to the jasmine stitch part that has 19. I'll kind of show you a little bit sped up how that looks. So here I'm finishing off that stitch, chain one. If you prefer a picture tutorial, I have a picture tutorial that's going to be linked down below. Okay, so yarn over. I'm not going to walk you through it because I'm just going to kind of do it fast, actually. yarn, wiggle through. You see, you notice I have it just pinched through my fingers a little bit. I like to keep my tension fairly tight so that these jasmines are nice and tight. If you don't mind a looser tension, um, then you can have a looser tension. That's just fine. I know that some people put their finger through to kind of hold the yarn um, and I'll show you here what happens if you accidentally let go of that yarn what can you do okay so we'll do that with this stitch here So if you actually let go and you pull that all through, two things you can do. You can either undo the whole stitch and start again, or if you kind of turn it over, you'll notice that right here is where that yarn is. I can tell with this color yarn, or with this kind of yarn, because the way that it's dyed, that it's very lighter colored strand right here. So I'm going to you know, try to pull that piece loose. You really try to get under that, depending on how tight you pull it, you might be able to do it this way or just undo the stitch and start again. We're learning here, so it's okay to undo what you've done and then just keep practicing. It's fine. We're learning. We're learning something new. We're learning a hard stitch. We're learning how to make it easy. Okay, so it's fine. <laughs> I'm really glad that you were brave enough to do this tutorial with me. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to be doing 10. So I'm just going to do these first 10 stitches. Um, if you would like to keep practicing this foundation puff, puff row, um, Definitely go ahead, pause this video, rewind it if you need to keep watching how the stitch is done and just practice. It does as long as you want to. Um, but then if you're going to create a project, make sure that all the 
when you work your gauge spot, you try to do all the same tension and maybe start again, pull back and all of that. I'm going to be using my gauge swatch as the front panel for this pillow. So um, just keep that in mind um, if you want to start again and do the same as me if you're participating in this pillow project. So that is the foundation row. Now to start the next row, I'm going to make another puff stitch to start it out. So it'll be kind of like we've done, it'll be just like we've done here but this is just technically the start of the next row. So pull out your yarn a little bit, yarn over, insert your hook through that same space, and we're gonna get seven loops on our hook by making that puff stitch. Okay, and then we're gonna pull through the same way. We're just making the puff stitch just the same way. with our slip knot here, slip stitch here, and then chain one. And now we're gonna be doing with the jasmine stitch. We're not just working those puff stitches anymore, we're working the jasmine stitch, which is three puff stitches combined before we pull through all of our loops, okay? So we're gonna get seven loops on our hook yet again. And this time we're going through, we're gonna go through that same space here. And we're gonna be working um, our little partial puff stitches through this space, that same one that we've been in this space here. So it's gonna be like basically the stitch we just made plus the stitch kind of right under it, right under that puff, and then in the next stitch. So we're gonna be working three, one right here, one right here, and the third one here, okay? So pull your yarn a little bit away to extend the stitch, yarn over, insert your hook through that first Puff space, yarn over, pull the loop, yarn that three times. Okay, so that's the first little part. Now we're gonna do the second part here. Okay, and we're gonna do basically the same thing, um, but this time we'll just be adding six loops. Okay, so we have seven here, and then we're gonna add six loops. By the end of this part, we'll have 13, okay? So yarn over, insert through that puff space right there. You see it? Yarn over, pull the loop. So we've just added two stitches or two loops. Yarn over, insert. Oops, that was number two. And here's number three. So we've just added six loops. We have our seven here. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then we're gonna do that same thing for the third time right here. We're gonna add six more. So six plus six plus seven is 19. We're gonna have 19 loops on our hook. Yarn over, insert through that next space, pull up a loop, making sure we're just extending our stitches a little bit to the size of our puffs. Okay, so here we are. Um, when you have all 19 loops on your hook and you know, you've made sure your stitches are extended a little bit, um, that helps prevent your yarn from getting uh, hooked and kind of tangled up in the strands. You're going to yarn over, grab at the base here. Sometimes I've seen people put their finger through here um, to keep hold of that yarn. You can do that. Um, I found that it makes these holes a little bit too... Um, big. So I like to keep it as tight as possible. You can always use a smaller hook to make that extra tight. So just kind of play around with it to get your gauge right and your tension right and all that. Okay, so yarn over, grab your yarn here at the base, and then we're going to pull through all 19 of those loops. Okay, you might find that you can do it in sections. And you see here, sometimes that happens, and the more you practice, the more you'll get better at that. Um, then maybe by the end of your big long project, you'll find that you can pull through all 19 of your loops at the same time. I've been able to do that before. <laughs> and you pat yourself on the back and keep going. Okay, then you insert your hook through that same part, you know, you grabbed onto that yarn. So you're gonna insert your hook through that space and then do a slip stitch just like we've done before. Okay, and then do a chain one. 
Okay, now we're going to be working. That's the jasmine stitch. We're going to be doing that over and over and over again. Okay, and you're going to be working those three puff stitches in those three spaces. Okay, so we're going to do it in this space in the center of that one and then in the spot right underneath. So right here and then the third one is here. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, so let's do it again. Kind of extend your stitch, yarn over, insert through that space. So one, then you'll be doing that insert through that same space for two, yarn over, insert that same space for three. So we've done that in this first space and now we're gonna go to the next one down here. Number two. Okay. So you should have 13 loops on your hook. You're going to do your puff stitch here in this next space. Okay, so now you have your 19 loops. You're going to yarn over, grab on to that yarn, and kind of wiggle your way through all 19 of those loops. Okay, and then insert your hook through that yarn you were just holding space then do your slip stitch okay and so now we've done two jasmine stitches the jasmine stitch is those puff stitches work through one two three spots so we continue along down the line until we get to the end i'll kind of show you the end because it's a little bit different on where you're going to put the last the third puff stitch really it's going to be in this space here or wherever you can find it. Okay, if you need to pause, rewind, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, while we go through this, definitely I'm going to show you um, a few of these fast, but then I'm going to do the rest off screen until we get to the end. Okay? So just kind of watch how I'm doing it at semi fast speed. Three. Next space is where, so we've done this one here. We're gonna do the second one here and the third one here. Okay, one, two, three. So we've got our one, two, three. You can see that I have all those there. You could count those up when you have 19 loops. Now you're gonna yarn over, grab that yarn here at the base and pull through all of those loops. Okay, see, you see I let go on there on accident. Sometimes that happens. I could either pull the whole thing out and just you know practice again or if it's not too bad, you can just grab that yarn right here. Go through all of those. Okay, then we have one, two, three jasmine stitches. So keep on doing that along the line. I'll show you at the end here. So um, pause, rewind, do whatever you have to do in order to get to where. I'll meet you up for um, the next row. I believe I mentioned this tip earlier, but I just wanted to do so right now before you get too far, um, is make sure that your stitches are extended a little bit so that when you yarn over and go through all of them, that just helps um, your yarn going here. You don't want to extend it too much because that will change um, your tension and your gauge and swatch, whatever, all that. Um, but see, like here, I'm having problems. I usually have the most problems right there at the end. But okay, continue on down the line. Okay, here we are. We are on our last stitch here. I can tell we're on our last stitch because we go one, 
We'll do our, you know, jasmine stitch here in this one, and then in the second spot, and then the third spot is going to be right here. Okay, I'll show you how we do that. Extend your yarn a little bit, yarn over. Just do the jasmine stitch like we do normally. Okay, and then our third one, we're working in this space here where we can find it. The same thing, we're going to yarn over, pull through all 19 of those loops. See, I'm getting a little bit better. Except I let go. See, here I'm bragging, but I just let go of my stitch, but here I found it. Okay, and then that is the end of that row there. Um, I would call that row two. Then we're going to chain one and turn. And how we're going to start out all the rows is with that puff stitch. We're going to work the puff stitch in that space right there. So we extend our yarn and again for the puff stitch we are going to get seven loops on our hook and then pull through all of them and then that's our puff stitch. Okay so yarn over, insert through that space, yarn over, insert through that space, pull up a loop, over, insert that space. Okay, so we're pulling up a loop, we're doing that puff stitch like we've done before. Yarn over, grab the yarn at the base of that puff, and pull through all seven of those loops. Insert your hook through that yarn space you were just holding on to, and do a slip stitch, and chain one. Okay, now we've kind of have that stitch going over here, and now we can do our jasmine stitch all the way to the end, okay? So the first um, puff for the jasmine stitch is this space here on top of that puff. The second one is here in that space, and then the third one is there in that space. You can already see that we have our flowers budding here. We have one, two, three, four petals on each little flower. Um, it's already starting to look pretty cute. By the end of this row, we'll have a completed flower. Okay, so we're going to work our jasmine stitch in this space here is for our first puff. Three. And in this space, oops, try that again. One, two, three. This is next space for a third puff. Okay, then yarn over. Grab that yarn at the base and pull through all 19 of those loops. Oops. This one it wasn't as good, but you know, we're still learning, we're still practicing, even though uh, I've already done it before. Insert your hook through that space in the yarn at the base that we've been grabbing, slip stitch, chain one. Okay, so work your jasmine stitch all the way across, and then I'll show you at the end where we're going to place it. Really, it's going to be right here. If you can find that space, you know, right here is where your last one's going to be. I um, will do the rest of this off screen, but I'll show you how I'm going to work that last stitch there. Um, but you can see our jasmine is coming together really nicely. I'll do one more so we can show you. Um, that whole jasmine flower stitch. So one puff, second puff is here. And the third one is here. Two, three, and over grab your yarn, pull through. All 19 loops. Almost there. Okay. 
go through that space and do your slip stitch in your chain one. Okay, look, we have one, two, three, four, five, six petals on our first completed little jasmine flower. It's like a little desert flower, isn't it? Oh, it's so pretty. Okay, Let's, I'll um, keep going, pause, rewind the video, whatever you need to do. And then I'll show you how to work the last jasmine stitch of row three. Okay, I'm working on my last jasmine stitch of row three. Here I've worked my first puff, then my second puff, and now my third puff is going to be worked in this spot right there. So yarn over, insert your hook through that space, and over pull up a loop, and we're going to be working that two more times in that space. By now you kind of get the hang of it. Okay, and I'll pull through all 19 of those loops until I let go of that stitch right there with that yarn, but it's still hanging out, so I'm going to insert go through all those loops. And now we have our three rows, our foundation row, second row, and now we've... It just looks so good. I'm excited. Okay, so now the rest of the rows are worked up just how we worked up row three. You start each row. Oops, I'm going to chain one in turn, and I'm going to work a puff stitch here. So each row is going to start out with that one single solitary puff stitch. Um, I've heard it called different things. Um, your beginning puff stitch, your foundation puff stitch, solitary puff stitch, whatever, okay? And then you do your jasmine stitch, which is the three puff stitches worked, one right here, one right here, one right here, okay? You work your three puff stitches right here, right here, right here, and then you practice and get as good as you can where you don't have these bigger <laughs> holes, but they're all the same size. So work up your swatch, keep practicing, um, and then when you're comfortable, move on to your project. I'm going to show you how I measure gauge for the jasmine stitch here. This is for my desert flower or desert jasmine pillow, um, a crochet along that I have on my blog. Um, so to measure gauge, you're going to grab your tape measure. This is my old janky thing that I have here. Maybe yours will be better than mine. And then partway through your swatch here, you're going to insert or you know start measuring from inside one of the little flowers in that hole there and then measure four inches okay for this pattern it is seven and a half stitches across and so we're going to go from one of those little holes to the next one to the next one to the next one that's how we're going to measure okay so you know we're in this first in this one here but we're going to call this one number one number two number three four five six seven and then this one's in between at four so seven and a half can you see that so that is how we measure that gauge across um, another way to see it is if you know you're in that hole there and you don't want to move that back and forth you can see like at the bottom of those v's is one so one like you see the bottom of those v's right there so one two three four five six seven and a half Okay, and then the number of rows is eight. Okay, so now we're going to kind of turn this a little bit or you can start down here. Um, once again, we're gonna go in the center of one of those holes. And then this way, it's kind of off a little bit, okay? Because instead of just looking for the center of the bees, we're gonna look for the holes, but they're gonna be um, staggered. Okay, so this is number one. The number two is down here, three, four, five, six, seven, and then this four is at number eight. So that's how I get eight rows by four stitches. Okay, so that is what your gauge should be for this um, desert flower pillow.